welcome to my uh, tech talk um, about a tutorial uh, from PyTorch on how you train audio on a neural network. And therefore, I have the honor to present you uh, my little presentation on how we're going to make sound to sense. First of all, I just want to tell you a little bit about me. So my name is Sabine Hasenleitner. I I love machine learning and I'm a really machine learning enthusiast and I love the logic behind and all the magic you can do with it. And I'm currently working on my master's degree um, at the Paris Lodron University of Salzburg uh, for computer science. So I hope I will finish it very soon. <laughs> um, I'm also working uh, part-time as a development engineer at uh, Eurofunk Salzburg, and I'm more um, at home at the back end side, let's say. So I'm not really a front end person. <laughs> and uh, our, the focus our team is handling at the moment is in AI aided translation and transcription systems. So a little bit about uh, the company Eurofunk Kappacher. Maybe some of you already heard about it. Um, we are a company, the headquarter is located in Sankt Johann in Pongau, and the speciality of Eurofunk is um, creating fully integrated control center solutions. So this means for uh, public services like police, ambulance and fire brigade, we uh, construct everything from the tables to the systems and the software um, to help those industries basically help people. <laughs> Um, so this is my small agenda for today. Um, first of all, I'm going to give you a short motivation on why should we use machine learning or, or AI systems in our company. Um, then I will explain you what PyTorch is and how we're going to use it. Uh, another part is then the data set we are going to look into and the data set we are going to train on. It's called speech commands. Then I just give you an insight of the tutorial and later on I will show you how you can use this neural network for deployment. So first of all, here the motivation. So from 2011 was there already a report uh, from the uh, 112 number that 28% uh, of the callers have language problems. And as the number will ensure to help everyone, this is really a problem which has to be tackled. So therefore, this European Emergency Number Association, shortly called EENA, called for a special AI project where they um, motivate companies to use AI um, to um, tackle these problems like the language detection and identification, like the transcription and translation, and also supporting triage if it's needed. So first here, we start with PyTorch. Um, PyTorch is an open source machine learning library from the Linux Foundation. And the principles or the basis of the system are those torch tensors where um, you can put in the number values of the problem you want to train on and the neural networks. And another important tool which will be used in this tutorial is um, Torch Audio. Um, it's also an open source library um, and it helps you with uh, audio and signal processing. So it has input output components and it um, allows signal and data processing functions, but it also supports you with data sets on its own. So for example, the speech command data set we are going to look into is from Torch Audio provided. So here on this link, you can find the data set. And also there is a paper to this data set where they explained in detail um, 
like how many speakers they used, what for was it used, and also some experiments are shown in this uh, paper. So in total, there are 105,000 utterances and 35 different words, so basically 35 different commands. So each uh, example or each, each audio sample uh, is one second long or less, and it's in uh, stored as a WAF file. They had 2,600 speakers, and in total, like the size is 3.8 gigabytes. So this is an overview of all those words in this speech command dataset. So like, for example, there are the words backward, forward, like giving directions, but also some, some animals like cat and dogs. They are always very important. <laughs> and also the digits like from zero to nine. And also here uh, is stated on how often um, this uh, word is spoken in the samples. So this means there for no is the word, um, there are about 4,000 utterances at all. But it is nice to see that overall the, the samples are very good distributed. So there is no word spoken like 100,000 times and the other word only once. So it's really important also when you train your model on something that your data is distributed. Um, so here is the link for the PyTorch tutorial. It is really nicely described on how you can use this and how you can train this problem. So it can be started when you're directly on this page. You can click this running Google Colab icon here, and then it will start and you can just process it, process it one by one. So it's really nicely explained. Another option is that you also can run it locally. So you can run it in your own Jupyter notebook. But here I just want to give you a small warning. So if you are training something on your local um, GP, GPU, you don't uh, want to mess around with your CUDA driver or something when you have an NVIDIA card because it could happen that you just wreck your um, GPU driver and then you have a black screen. So this maybe happened to me, <laughs> maybe cost me one day. I won't tell anything here, but yeah, you don't want to do this. So I can just recommend Anaconda and there you have a kind of sandbox you can um, install the CUDA driver on. And here is also just a shortcut of the tutorial. So it's from importing the data set, then formatting the data, um, defining the network, and then the training and testing, and also some conclusion there explained. I will don't step through this everything because it's really nicely explained and could be done on its own. The only thing I want to mention is on um, what they train here are basically only the waveforms of an audio. So this means like the waveform is in technical side only an array with its magnitudes. You have values, uh, negative values and positive values and sometimes also zeros. And this is over the time. And here, you can maybe see already that on the word cat, it has a specific waveform because it has peaks at the letter A and it has a stop then at the letter T. So when you run this tutorial, after already 21 epochs, this is, this is really fast, you are getting a neural network uh, with an accuracy of 85%. So this is really nice. Let's say when you train something and you are above 80%, you could already be pretty glad. So this is a really nice result. So when you are, when you trained this on your Google Colab, you just have to make sure that you also store your network correctly. So this means you have to mount your drive and then you can store it to your Google Drive and there you can download it for your local usage. 
And here now the part where you can load and save the model. So it's also very nicely described on the PyTorch page. And um, I always use for such examples where you no longer want to train the model because on this model after 21 epochs, you not really get any better improvements. So you're not ending up with 100%. You're getting stuck at some point. So which means you would maybe need more data or yeah, would have to change something on the data. So with Torch script, you can simply store your model and then use it later in deployment, but you not cannot train it again or like refine it in some direction. So this means with this um, method, like the torch JIT script, you can um, uh, export it and then save it as your name. So you can, I can't show the cursor, <laughs> but you can save it uh, on your name. You can choose, so here it's called model scripted. And uh, later on, when you want to deploy it in your program, you load it and then you have to switch the model to eval. This is needed, so it means for evaluation. And this is needed because when you switch it to the evaluation mode, it will drop out the, um, the dropout and the batch normalization layers. So those layers you need if you train something, but you want to get rid of them if you really want to use your model then in practice. So here, when we did this training, uh, we ended up with a model of the size 138 kilobytes, which is really slim. And it has around 26,000 parameters. For example, one of the large language models used for um, transcription and translation, like the Whisper model, uh, the Whisper Tiny model has already 39 million parameters. And I think the size is about, I don't know, two or three gigabytes at least, I would say. Uh, then later on, we uh, transform the waveform into a tensor. We then pass the tensor um, to the model for evaluation. And the model will give us a result as a string. I mean, we have to implement it, implement this, but uh, we will get out the result, the string, and this we can use for our visualiza visualization. Um, the only thing you have to care about is like, maybe always with, if you handle with audio, you have to take care about the sample rate, the length, and also the amount of channels. So it could happen if you have the wrong sample rate and pass it to your model and you wonder why you don't recognize anything correctly. It's just because it only understands one sample rate basically. So this model is trained on a sample rate of 8,000 um, per second. So this means you have to just keep this in mind. And if you do this, you will have no problems. So now we come to a little live demonstration of how this works. So, and therefore I have locally uh, just installed or written a, a small Flask script, a Python program, uh, where I can demonstrate this and use also this model. So therefore, um, as I trained on the GPU, I had, I used Anaconda. Therefore, I first have to activate uh, my Anaconda uh, setting. So, and I had a misspell. So, here. And now I'm gonna start my program. Yeah, okay. So, I'm getting a simple page now. And um, please excuse my front-end programming skills as <laughs> they are not really existing at all. <laughs> um, so, okay. And now we have our nice page. 
um, where our program is ready uh, for our commands and it should recognize what command I've spoken. And I have a little cheat sheet here as I do not all know all these commands by heart. But for example, um, if we try this one now, cat. Nice. So it detected correctly. I could also try something more difficult like backward maybe. Backward. Nice. Most of the time he don't understands me, so I have some struggles. Or like a digit. One. Nice. So it works. But also if you say or tell something which is not in the list, like my name. Let's try it. Sabine. Yeah. He's, he don't know and he takes the best possible solution for this. So like this is our... A small little script and I will also show you something of the code uh, here. So like this is only uh, the, the flask part here like all those imports and also you need the torch audio or the, or the torch audio makes you a lot of things more easier. Otherwise you have to like import or load the waveforms and then you have to pass it to a, a tensor and yeah, you don't really want to waste your time with this. And then uh, here is, let's say the heart. So basically when I use this page, I record my audio and then I load, load this audio uh, with Torch audio. And then I pass it to uh, the model basically and get back my detected command. Um, here in the command process helper class, uh, I have uh, those labels array, which gives me the indices or the indexes uh, where or what word is the detected word. And uh, here in the code is also the example where we then really load the model into our program. And yeah, and this is uh, the prediction method. In the prediction method, we get the waveform, what is called here tensor. And then we pass it to the device. Let's say if we use G GPU or a CPU, this will make a difference. And we have to change this with this tensor to device method. And then we have to unsqueeze the tensor so we can, so the model can work with it. And then the get likely index will give us the most likely word. So what the model returns us is another array where you have probabilities in it. And so with the li get likely index, we, with this helper method, we get then the most likely word or let's say the index. And then with the index to label, we get our prediction, which is really the string. And this string we pass to the program. Yes. So this is everything to the program. And with this, you can easily yeah, make your own neural network for uh, detecting those commands. Yep, thank you very much for your attention and I wish you happy commanding. <laughs>